Well, a year's already gone by, and final resolution is December the 9th, I believe. Yes, it's the 9th. And, um, I do apologize for, uh, what was the last paper I, I didn't do? Turning Point? There were some things in the past that needed to be done, and there just wasn't enough time in the day to do it on <laughs> just one day. So, the makeup for it, I'll probably do a second part if there's anything added to the card, which I doubt. But you never know, it's TNA. Uh, but speaking of TNA, though, I want to say something that I don't normally give them credit for. They have actually had some of the best pay-per-views recently that I've seen in a very long time. And uh, one that really shits on TNA sometimes. I have to give them credit where credit is due. This is probably the first pay-per-view in a long time that might be a three in a row for good pay-per-views for TNA. I mean, this has not been unheard of for a very long time. You know, every once in a while you have a good pay-per-view, but not two of them in a row. Final Resolution and the other one. I don't remember. I don't even remember the name. I feel bad about it, but uh, and it was amazing by itself. And, you know, I could nitpick a little bit at it, but still. Uh, we'll just start off, and we'll do these really quickly because honestly, there there might be another one next week, or there's probably the one announced today. That uh, because by the end of the show they announced two other matches that they didn't show on the thing, but oh well. The world title. First of all, we're just gonna start big and work on our way down here. First of all, Bobby Roode versus Jeff Hardy. If you have not been watching the past few weeks, you know that James Storm won the opportunity to face the world champion at Final Resolution. No, not Final Resolution, I'm sorry, Turning Point. Thus, leaving AJ Styles unable to have a title shot until the next year's Bound for Glory, which is amazing that they would do that and not fuck it up at this point. That's, a, that's amazing. But, you know, they have, they, I'll get to that why later. Uh, but... Then Bobby Roode said, put put it on the line, have a match. Bobby Roode won the match, and it's now your number one contender, and faces Jeff Hardy for the world title, which last which last review kind of made, was kind of, I first thought, you know, it was the remake of WrestleMania 10 with the ladder match, two belts, except this is TNA and WCW would have this, this equivalent to this, is the WCW ladder match clusterfuck of WrestleMania 10. But, with that being said, uh, I'd have to give them credit because it was really good. And if you haven't seen it, well, see that, well, try and find that match because I'm not going to spoil anything, but I will say there was a little ode to when Mr. McMahon made the belts lift up with Austin Aries at the controls. It was actually kind of funny. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? But I was just marking out at that point because that was epic. You don't really see that often, and I have to give him credit for that. But with this one, Bobby Roode is going on the tirade of the a la the Ric Flair where he was the real world's champion. If those who remember that, I thank you, but still. Bobby Roode, honestly, I don't know why, but I kind of like it. I love it. Much like I love the new tag team name, Bad Influence, but I'll get to that later as well. With Bobby Roode and Jeff Hardy, this is a match that does not make sense to me, but honestly, I'd have to go with Bobby Roode just because Jeff Hardy, does, I still don't believe, deserves the title. I don't know why. I just don't like him. But the fact that he has two belts, why the fuck do you need two titles? I don't understand that either. But you know what? It is what it is. It's fucking TNA. Anything can happen. We could have fucking Gilbert for all we know and call him Gilback. I don't fucking know. And that might actually happen. So if it happens, I told you so. But moving on to the Knockouts Championship, something I was going to talk about at Final Resolution as well. With uh, last review, there was a title match with. Well, not, not a title match. It should have been a title match. Because TNA basically has the Blackout Tag Belts as the fucking mixed tag team belts for all I care. Because Eric Young and EY, they're entertaining, but why do they have the belts? They're not defending them, they're not using them. It's, it's just a prop. Most like most belts are, but this is literally a fucking prop. It's ridiculous. It's not even defended. It's not even used as a weapon. It, it's just there. And that match was pretty good as well. For the former Jesse Garters of OVW, Mr. Pactacular, former OVW World Tag Team Champion, and Kurt, girlfriend apparently to Tara, which, you know, with a lot of relationships nowadays, especially with Ashton Kusher and Demi Mork breaking up and this new Savago or whatever the guy's name is, dating her and older women, the world's fucked up. So is TNA. I don't care. What I do care about is this match. 
Uh, Mickey James came back from to win a battle royal of all the knockouts that have not previously been used, which is stupid, but it it was good. And uh, Mickey James fought Tara. Well, actually, no, she's going to face Tara for the knockouts title. Excuse me. I'm thinking last, last night they faced she faced Gail Kim. That's what I'm thinking of. But this match is actually pretty good. I've been waiting for this for a long time. It, it reunites the feud from a year ago that ended in a steel cage, which TNA also got as good with, with the knockouts, and I commend them for. And honestly, with Jesse at ringside, I don't know what's going to happen in this match, but I do know that he might interfere and might bring Tara the win. I'm not going to say who will win. I'm not going to make a prediction on that, because honestly, I just love this match overall. Now we go to why AJ Styles does not have a title shot for the next year. Yes, he lost the match at uh, Turning Point. I almost said Bound for Glory, but no, it's a Turning Point, and uh, they're reigniting the Daniels and AJ feud again, which, how many times can you do that? It's not that I don't like it. The matches are good, but that's the it, it's like the bread and butter. That's the only thing you can do. Why? Why not make him face Kaz and then lead towards a Daniels-AJ match? I, I, mean, I don't understand that. But uh, I do like the the uh, new team of uh, well not the new team but the new name of the team Bad Influence, and the fact that they're doing fucking Gangnam Style, which is hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't know why it's just funny. But um, with this match again, I don't care for this one. It'll be a great match. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I do believe AJ Styles will have to win it to get some momentum because it's a big shot down the ladder that you lost your opportunity. Maybe put him in a TV title shot, maybe put him in a tag team title shot, or something, put him back in the fucking X Division, I don't know, which where he prospered, try to make him work, work back into that Bound for Glory storyline, which I don't remember if it was after Bound for Glory, or at Bound for Glory, so that might work, if he wins the X Division title and goes all the way and holds it with the uh, rule of the X Division champion, can cash it in like money in the bank for the world title shot at Bound for Glory. Maybe something like that down the road. And if that does happen, I told you so. But I don't I don't think it will. TNA's probably not that smart. But um say I do think AJ will win this match though, get some momentum going and hopefully get back on the road to redemption, maybe. And that would be it. But there's two more matches that were made after the show. Uh, Austin Aries was going to face uh Bully Ray anyway, I think thought that was coming, but with Championship Thursday, the X-Division title, Austin Aries was going to go the path I was actually talking about earlier with the X-Division Championship. Aries probably holding it until Bound for Glory and facing around Damon. An actually epic match. I actually thought the title was going to change hands, but he brings the mic, talks about Brooke Hogan. That's another thing I want to talk about, but I'm going to have to split this up right quick and just do that. My treat.